So, good day. Um, the title of my lecture is uh, the GW method, uh, a common approximation and practical implementation. What we want uh, to tell you with this lecture is uh, um, how to pass from the, from the theory that we have seen in the previous lecture to practical implementation in the Yambo code through all the approximation that we will use to arrive to our final uh, results. As we have seen again in the previous lectures, uh, we are interested in uh, calculating quantities that we can then measure experimentally as, for instance, a photo emission experiment. In photo emission experiment, we have seen we measure the kinetic energy of an upcoming electron uh, ejected from a light pulse, uh, and uh, this uh, energy will be then uh, will provide us information on the difference of energy between uh, a system with an electron and a system with n minus one uh, electron. So uh, let's start uh, from um, from the DFT, the workhorse for electronic structure calculation. Uh, we know the Cohen-Sham equation, the well-known Cohen-Sham equation. These are the equation of non-interactive systems uh, uh, with an effective exchange correlation potential. This moderate, uh, it has moderate computational cost, uh, predict ground state geometries, electronic structure with a great accuracy. And uh, what about, uh, for instance, uh, the gap of the materials? Um, here it is uh, uh, a famous uh, uh, plot. We have different semiconductor insulators. And uh, uh, as you can see, these are calculations done uh, with a local density approximation compared with experiment, uh, and uh, the agreement is uh, very poor. The problem is not uh, the local density uh, approximation. So uh, again, let's look again what is uh, uh, exactly the gap has uh, measured, measured from a direct and inverse photo emission experiments. Is uh, uh, the difference uh, between electrode affinity ionization potential, and by their definition, uh, you can recognize that the ejection or removal of an electron is always a many body process. So, uh, the question is uh, we can calculate the, the gap directly using a total energy from DFT. Uh, the answer is. Uh, yes and not at the same time. Here, for, if we look at the gap as a difference of eigenvalues, we realize that uh, it's not the right definition of, uh, of the gap. Here, doing some algebra from the total energy of a DFT calculation, we can see there are many terms missing. But uh, uh, if we do calculate uh, uh, using energy difference, for instance, here, here is a set of molecules, we uh, see that we can find reasonable results. But uh, uh, the problem is uh, we don't know how to uh, consider n plus one or n minus one uh, electron system for a periodic solids. So uh, we need a theory uh, that um, can um, link exactly the n particle system and n plus or minus one particle system. This is a many body perturbation theory and the quantity we want to look at is the green function. The green function contains the exact right excitation energy besides other quantities, uh, uh, observable size exc excitation lifetime, ground state density, uh, in general, expectation values of one particle uh, operator, including uh, total energy. So um, we have seen already uh, how it is defined the green function. And the green function uh, by Fourier transform, we can recognize that uh, has uh, the poles are the true many particle excitation energy we are looking uh, we are looking for we are looking at. So uh, how to obtain this green function practically? Now this is the the, the problem we want to to look at. Uh, here it comes perturbation theory. Uh, let's start from something that is known, and we want to evaluate something that is not not known, hoping the difference is small. So let's name G0, the, uh, the green function of uh, non-interacting electron Hamiltonians. We uh, consider an interaction and uh, the let's define uh, the difference between these two quantity, the self-energy of uh, our problem. So uh, the question we have seen before, before can be cast uh, in this way. 
let's suppose that uh, we note the G naught, the green function of the mean field systems, and we can arrive uh, to this equation that is the quasi particle uh, equation. If you inspect this equation, there are similarities with respect to the Konishan equation, uh, but uh, difference we have the self energy instead of the local potential uh, Xg, uh, the self-energy is not Hermitian, is non-local, is frequently dependent. And uh, uh, while the exchange correlation potential is the part, uh, is the potential of a fictitious uh, consumption system, now the self-energy is the potential felt by an added removed electron uh, from or to our uh, system. Besides that, the eigenvalues will be uh, complex uh, quantities. Okay, so um, how to uh, obtain, uh, in order to build our equation, now we want to see how to uh, obtain the uh, self-energy. Uh, uh, the answer is given by the Hedin equation we have seen uh, before. We start uh, considering the green function of the non-interacting system. So the self-energy will be zero. And uh, uh, here neglecting uh, the, uh, the vertex, uh, we arrive to our definition of the self-energy that it is indeed uh, GW. So uh, here an important remark, note that the vertex has been neglected. So this is an approximation. And here we insert another very common approximation in the calculation we uh, consider the non-interactive in function G naught. So uh, now we have our quasi particle causal equation. We know uh, how it is defined the self-energy. We consider the green function of the non-interacting system and we arrive to our equation now that G naught W for our self-energy. Now uh, W. <laughs> W uh, provides up for depolarization and screening. It is a Dyson equation and uh, contained in the heading equation. And now the polarization with our choice, the G equal G naught is uh, defined as G naught G naught. So uh, the starting point is here, we solve the uh, independent particle calculation on a sham system, for instance, local density approximation, and we can build our polarization made of non-interacting electron and holes in this way that uh, I show here uh, below. So the screening, once we have the polarization, it is what uh, is called the random phase uh, approximation. We uh, consider a classical heart interaction between an additional charge in the system and the created polarization charge. This is the very famous random phase approximation. And uh, in the, we, when we look at the Dyson equation, our screened interaction will contain all the bubble of the polarization, this called bubble uh, approximation and the uh, potential, the Coulomb potential at all the, uh, the orders. So now we have uh, our uh, self energy at uh, so the so-called G naught, W naught level. It is a common practice uh, to uh, separate in uh, exchange and the correlation uh, part. The uh, exchange parts, uh, the integral uh, in frequency can be done uh, analytically, and we arrive exactly to a Hartree-Fox exchange term. And while the uh, correlation term uh, to be computed numerically, uh, the integral uh, over frequency and the most, most time consuming uh, part of uh, our calculation. Different implementation exists in the literature in various code. We, uh, YAMBO is a reciprocal space and frequency domain uh, code for the GW as for instance, other code as a BINIT uh, and BAST, but here some reference, it exists uh, many other implementations of the uh, GW, of the GW uh, calculation. Here, uh, don't be scared, it's just uh, uh, writing the uh, two parts, the two components of the self-energy in, in a plane wave uh, basis set. And uh, uh, the, uh, 
we start to see that uh, in order to compute this quantity, we need to do an integration over the Berlin zone, so k-point sampling convergences. We have some over states, some over, some over unoccupied states, and uh, the most painful part, an integration in the, uh, in the genomain. Uh, here, just uh, uh, very quickly, this is something you will see in the afternoon in the Anson. Uh, these are exactly the variable that we uh, have to uh, check in input to converge. So the, um, from the, in the case of the, ex the exchange part of the energy, the cutoff in uh, plane wave and the uh, K points. For the correlation parts, we have also the uh, unoccupied states. And we have uh, here the epsilon minus one, that is uh, uh, the block, uh, the, it is the, um, the electric matrix, uh, the, the, the electric matrix, and we have uh, to converge his uh, dimension, the block size of the dimension. Now, uh, the frequency dependent part, what it is usually done, but not always, uh, is the so-called plasma pole approximation. We assume that the frequency dependence of uh, the dielectric matrix uh, exhibit, uh, uh, can be modeled with just one pole. This is the plasmon pole approximation. We have now an analytical expression for the uh, frequency uh, dependence. The integral can be solved at analytic. analytically. This simplifies a lot the problem. But uh, consider the different recipes exist in the literature to evaluate the poles and residues of the, uh, the electric matrix, and these give uh, also two different results in many cases. Here I compare for some uh, typical uh, insulators, silicon, carbon, uh, zinc oxide, the um, full frequency expressions of uh, our dielectric matrix with respect to the different kind, the different flavor of plasmon pole. In many cases here, the results of the gap, uh, considering for several materials, considering different uh, uh, recipes, while for silicon and diamond, we have very similar results. There are cases, as for instance, the zinc oxide, where the discrepancy is very huge. So the um, the, it's important to check also the model uh, of the uh, plasmon pole you are uh, assuming, but note the, the plasmon pole approximation becomes questionable in a, when the frequency dependence for a material where it is uh, not uh, possible to approximate with a single pole, uh, it's a questionable for its interfaces of the electrons in, uh, in copper, just uh, to few example, examples. And in this case, the fuel integration uh, is, uh, is needed. So now we know how to build uh, the, uh, our self-energy. We know how also how to uh, integrate it uh, in frequency. Uh, in order to solve the quasi-particle equation, here it comes another approximation so that uh, our uh, amplitude of the quasi-particle approximated by the Consham states. Uh, once we have done that, we can, for instance, uh, solve our nonlinear equations uh, um, by uh, expanding at first order uh, around the uh, Consham uh, edge. So here, to recap, uh, the workflow of our calculation will start always for a, a Consham uh, DFT calculation. You choose your exchange correlation potential. From the uh, eigenstate and eigen function, you can build your non-interacting green function, your p naught, your polarization. Then you can, with the polarization, you can build your screened uh, interaction, also uh, frequency dependent, for instance, via plasma pole uh, approximation, and then solve the quasi-particle equation and obtain the quasi-particle uh, energy. So now, uh, how good are the, uh, these uh, g naught and w naught approximation? Uh, here, some uh, results are shown before. I can see, uh, you can see that uh, now we have a quite uh, good, reasonable uh, agreement and a good uh, and a huge improvement with respect to the results obtained in density and functional theory. 
This is not the end of the story, not uh, here for Diamond, this perfect agreement uh, is, uh, uh, the agreement is perfect, but uh, uh, for a wrong reason, we can maybe uh, discuss uh, uh, later the reason why it happens. Uh, so we have solved our GW uh, equation, the quasi particle calculation. We can think about also to calculate absorption. Uh, the answer usually is not. Here it is uh, uh, for a simple system silicon. I compare the uh, absorption spectrum with the experiment, the FT, GW, the uh, the experimental feature are not uh, catch at all. So something is missing, there's something you will see in the next days uh, of, the, of the school. So some conclusive remarks, many virtues of the GW approximation is a parametric field method and uh, that provides in most of the case uh, accurate uh, results. It is the starting point also for calculation of uh, spectroscopy, but other ingredients are needed. And uh, today is a feasible for medium sized system, uh, algorithm suitable for HP computation, uh, particularly for GPU cards. But uh, uh, if your results don't match the experiments, do not worry. Uh, so check uh, always carefully your convergences parameter. It is very, very important. And uh, um, even at G node W node, which is the simplest approximation, you, here I just put uh, uh, several uh, parameters that you have to carefully check uh, before having a meaningful results. Uh, even if you converge everything, do not forget that uh, this is a GW, it is an approximation for the self-energy, vertex effects are being neglected. Many approximation enters in the practical uh, calculation that I showed before. Here are uh, summarized plus one pole model, RPA level for the screening. And uh, uh, you can observe also an important dependent from the DFT starting point uh, you use to build your green function and your uh, screening. So uh, here uh, I conclude. I uh, leave here some uh, reference, the seminal paper of the Dean and Lundquist some review, including some recent uh, uh, reviews about the method. These are the two papers uh, with the implementation in the, in the Yambo code. And uh, I thank you uh, for your attention. <laughs>